Good evening fellow Plaxers. This is a follow-up video to yesterday's video about creating a new volume on a Synology expansion unit, a DX517 that I added to my DS1520 plus NAS and I added two four terabyte drives and I have two more to add. So let me let me showcase my messy basement setup. Good afternoon fellow Plexers. This will be a continuation of the video I made yesterday showing how to add a DX517 expansion box to a Synology NAS. So this is my little I forgot to mention this little unit on top of the second expansion box is my 11th gen i5 NUC running Unraid without a storage array and it's pulling the um, files off the Synology NAS as, a, as, as its Plex library. Little cob together set up in the basement. I've got a 16 port switch over there, my VOIP adapter, Samsung Smart Things. An old Western Digital single drive NAS, two different HD home run tuners, my Sense Home Energy Monitor. I've got one UPS here and another one back there, and my original DS1019 Plus NAS with the yellow stickers on it, the first expansion box with the red stickers, the DS1520 with the green stickers, and the new expansion box. So all I'm going to do is slide these drives in while everything is running. And the NAS should start to beep. And while I'm doing that, I want to lock the bays. And I can't lock that one. Not in film. Okay, so it's locked. So pretty soon this should start beeping to tell me I've done something to it. I'm not going to wait for that, and after dinner I'll somehow get this on the screen as I show you how to add these two new drives to the existing array. These are all four terabyte drives in here. Stay tuned for the rest. Thanks. Okay, and of course we have a Synology help document, which basically says if your NAS isn't hot swappable, and you would know that because you couldn't open up the storage bays like I did, you'd have to take the NAS case apart to do it. If you've got the lockable storage bays, that means you're hot swappable. So if you're not hot swappable, shut it down, put the drives in, start it back up. If you are hot swappable, leave it running, put the drives in, lock them in, and then come up to your computer where DSM is running. So basically it says, go to Storage Manager, Storage, click the upper right icon with the three dots, and choose the pool you want to expand, and then add the drive. So we'll go to Storage Manager, and you'll see I've got both volumes from yesterday. This one took about 24 hours to create, and I haven't put anything on it. So we'll go to storage, and this is what we want. Storage pool two, and these three little dots, we'll click. We'll choose add drive, and we will select both of these. Hit next. And now if you already have the volume created and you're adding drives, you can keep using your volume while the new drives are getting acclimated to the system. A warning that all the drive or all the information on the drive will be erased will say yes or will say okay to that option. And right here it says adding drives, initializing drives. So we'll simply have to wait. This will probably be another 24 hours to get those drives added to the array. And I'll still have one bay left, the fifth bay. So now these four, four terabyte drives 
were originally in my first NAS. I thought that would be plenty of room and then I caught the Plex bug like, like smoke and crack. And then in that first NAS, I put a 8 terabyte drive in the fifth slot. And as I needed more room, I then pulled the 4 terabyte out of the first and put an 8 terabyte in. And that jumped up my storage. And I kept going that way until all five slots were filled with 8 terabyte drives. And then I needed 12 terabyte drives. So I bought a pair of 12 terabyte drives and an expansion unit. So when I put two 12 terabyte drives into that first NAS, I put two four terabyte drives into the expansion unit. And then each time I bought a new 12 terabyte drive, one of the old four terabytes would drop down to the expansion unit. So I'd gain space on both um, units at the same time. And finally, this was filled with 12 terabyte drives. And I'm, I'm sorry, I went through the whole steps with four to eights, shifting the fours down. Then I went through the whole process again, replacing the eights with the twelves, then shifting the twelves down. I, I misspoke earlier. So I ended up with all twelves in this unit and all eights in the expansion for the DS1019+. plus. Last year I bought a new um, 1520 plus and filled it with five 16 terabyte drives to start off the bat. And as you can see, I'm not out of room. I had a chance to buy another expansion unit at a little bit of a discount and I grabbed it. And I decided to put it in use yesterday to help a member of the um, group figure out how to do it himself. So that's it, just a short video. It's really easy to do this with Synology NASes. And if if I wanted to upgrade a drive in the future, you simply pull it out, the NAS will go into degraded status, you put the new replacement drive in, um, which has to be the same size as the largest drive you have in the unit. You pop that in, you come here, you click a few mouse buttons, and next thing you know it's initializing, and usually it takes about 36 hours when you have data on the volume to initialize the drive. So you don't do it when there's a thunderstorm coming and, and you really should have a UPS um, powering the system in case of power loss. You don't want to lose power while you're doing all this stuff. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching and happy plexing with your Synology NAS.